Well, welcome back to Franco Fridays. I've got a real doozy for you today, and that is 1977's Women in Cell Block 9, also known as Tropical Passion, I believe. This is another collaboration between uh, Franco and Edwin C. Dietrich. Uh, and this one is, I think, when you, when you talk about women in prison or chicks and chains movies, I don't hear a lot of people mentioning this one. I think this one is one of the roughest, darkest, most misogynic films in the whole canon of women in chains movies. Um, it's 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 really interesting and dark and um, I mean even the ending, which I'm not going to give away, but the, a lot of these films, you've you know the women escape and kind of things go well but in this one this is extremely dark extremely misogynic uh throughout the film film stars howard vernon uh as the lecherous prison warden uh lecher he just he he oozes creepiness in this film as typical of howard vernon and then it also stars the uh beautiful blonde bombshell karen gambier um as well as the the apparently underage at the time, Susan Humphrey. Uh, and so that, once again, with Franco films, you get some um, interesting backstory uh, and interesting um, homework, if you will, because the BBFC, uh, 30 years after this film came out, banned the film because of, apparently, a, we think it's Susan Humphrey, uh, was underage at the time of the filming of this. So the wheels of the wheels of justice turn very, very slowly. But apparently, in 30 years later, the BBC decided, BBFC decided that this film was inappropriate because of underage nudity. Uh, but what I would tell you for your homework is, if that is true, <clears throat> what about? Love Letters of a Portuguese Nun, which Susan uh, Susan Humphrey was in as well, around the same time. Uh, so yeah, uh, for the, there's a little homework for you Franco fans. Uh, be interesting to see what the story is on that because it's they basically were made at the same time. Uh, anyway, this this film is a, the setup is similar to all the others. You've got a group of women that are being basically transported illegally uh, in South America. An army patrol stops the truck and finds the women and, and puts them in a prison run by Howard Vernon and this other, his female compatriot. Uh, and of course, a succession of uh, sleazy, sleazy torture scenes and things like that are going on. Uh, wow. It's a, uh, I, for all of you that um, have seen a bunch of these women in prison films, um, I would highly suggest, any, and you like them, obviously you have to like them before I would even recommend it, I would highly suggest checking out Women in Cell Block 9. And just so uh, I get my point across, I'm going to, and I'm going to do this a little differently than my normal reviews for Franco Friday, is I'm going to turn this into what I typically do for some of my slasher reviews, and that is kind of give you some drive-in totals, a la Joe Bob Briggs. I think for this film, uh, I decided to do that because I, I, there's a lot, this film has a lot to offer. Uh, from the musical score by Walter Baumgartner, uh, to the beautiful women in it, to the, to the dark, dark misogynic uh, message in the film. And it's, an, and it's a very well shot film too. So I'm going to leave you, what I'm going to do now is leave you with my Joe Bob Briggs style uh, rundown of the film. And then I'm going to rest my case in terms of making a persuasive argument to check this film out. We have, first up, crotch licking, lesbian crotch licking at that. Uh, we've got some Howard Vernon voyeurism. That's a, that's a big time point. We've even got Richard Gere gerbling. And if you don't know what that is, I would just suggest Googling it because I'm not going to explain it. Six sets of boobs. Six sets of hairy cooches. 
One, Walter Baumgartner, God Save the Queen type music. Uh, I give that a point mainly because it was played um, really incongruously with this crotch licking scene. You've got this crotch licking scene and then, and then overlaid uncomfortably with that, and it worked beautifully, is this this kind of this royal type music. It's it's very uncomfortable. It's almost celebratory in its uh, style. Uh, one sexy saxophone track. You get uh, you get an assortment of different types of music in this thing. One underage victim, which is we believe Susan Humphrey. Um, four girls manacled. And dog collars. It's a dog collar orgy. We've got butt cheek groping up close. We've got alligator wrangling. Although the alligator wrangling I almost need to just take that point off because it was stock footage. Uh, we've got naked lagoon swimming. We've even got nude sunbathing, which is probably photographically the best scene in the film in terms of looking at the girls naked laying there in the glistening sun that that was a very good scene we even have minor surgery with two blades of grass i mean it was ludicrous uh, they're trying to remove a bullet from this girl and they've got what what is basically the width of a blade of grass and she's trying to surgically remove yeah it's hilarious you've got rifle bludgeoning Academy Award winning nomination, drive-in nominations for Howard Vernon for his his sleazy, voyeuristic, uh, over-the-top acting, and a an drive-in Academy Award winning nomination for um, Karen Gambier for being the sexy blonde bombshell that she is. There you go. I rest my case. Women in Cell Block 9, 7 out of 10. Go check it out. That'll do it for Franco Fridays. Thanks for watching.